Anthony Joshua versus Daniel Dubois is set for September the 21st at Wembley Stadium. It is a Riyadh season card in the UK, which is just, it's brilliant. I love the fact that we're getting the Riyadh season card in the UK. And here is the undercard. Now, whether this is the final undercard or not, I do not know. There could be some prelims they could add on. You just don't know. I mean, at the end of the day, they finalized the card for Terence Crawford, Israel Majimov, and then obviously there was a pullout. And it was a, it was a pullout I was disappointed in. You know, Virgil Ortiz, Tim Zhu, Tim Zhu pulling out. Understandably, the cuts hadn't healed. And you kind of think, okay, we're going to lose that fight. What did they get in its place? Anderson versus Bacoli. So you don't really know until kind of fight week what you're going to get with these cards. And I have to say, I like this card. It has some good fights, some good na- some fights I didn't really expect to see, uh, quite frankly. Um, some fights that, you know, you do hear rumors and we kind of knew Boatzi. We'll talk about that now in a sec. That, that will be one of them. But when I look at this, I'm just like, whoa, um, I wasn't expecting that and that just kind of came out of thin air it really did so need no introduction but i'll give it one anyway the main event is obviously going to be anthony joshua daniel dubois for the ibf heavyweight championship i like that fight as i've said several times i think it's bloody brilliant i think it's going to be electric i think it's going to have fireworks i can't hype that fight up enough even if i try it but i'll still try because i think it's bloody brilliant i think it's a great fight lower down the card Mark Chamberlain versus Josh uh, Padley. Now, I know who Mark Chamberlain is, and he seems to be on the Saudi shows a lot, seems to be a favorite fighter of Turkey Al Al Sheikh. But Josh Padley, I have to say I've never actually heard of him. He has a record of 14-0, so he's undefeated. He has only four knockouts in those 14 wins his actual previous actually his previous three fights to be fair have all finished inside the distance two tkos and a corner retirement does it say why no it doesn't it doesn't say why but interestingly i mean that's this is a british fighter and that fight was in malta okay uh but yeah primarily based in the uk again forgive my ignorance but i haven't actually seen him or at least i'm not aware that i've seen him fight Looking at his resume, there's journeyman there whose names you would recognise. Jamie Quinn, he's a well-known journeyman on the domestic scene in Britain. Uh, Brian Morenia. I think he is one of those journeymen who occasionally does come to win. I, I distinctly remember him, Frank Arnold. That was the fight. That was a Frank Warren show on the York Hall back in 2020. It was actually a really good show. I think um, Denzel Bentley might have fought on it. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. But he actually scored a big knockout that night. So he's... A journeyman who does come to win. Jimmy first. I wonder, was he first? Jordan Ellis, Mark Butler. So he's kind of fought mainly just journeyman, right? But journeyman that you know, and, and that if you do have any chinks in your armor, you know, they will show you up a little bit. So he's in there with Chamberlain, who has looked mega impressive. Like he has looked mega impressive as of late, especially last time around. I mean, I didn't see that first round knockout coming at all. So Chamberlain home fight because he's put his last two fights have been in saudi so let's see how he gets on there that's going to be an interesting one this one is one that's just a bit of a surprise more so it's like okay <laughs> you know which is josh kelly versus liam smith josh kelly's been rebuilding over the last couple of years was is obviously his promoter now kelly sourland and liam smith liam smith i'm not really sure i think is he still with boxer because uh, I know obviously he fought Eubank Jr. twice. He obviously beat Eubank Jr. and then was stopped in the rematch. Hasn't fought since then. At least not that I'm aware of. Uh, you know, if you were talking about a peak Liam Smith, which is probably a couple of years ago now, but if you said peak Liam Smith versus Josh Kelly of today, I would be picking Liam Smith to win that fight. I would. I'd be picking Liam Smith to win the fight. I think he'd walk Kelly down. I don't think Kelly would have enough to keep Liam Smith off him with, to be honest with you. And I think Liam Smith will just walk Kelly down and maybe drag him into the trenches and ultimately get a stoppage. That would be my kind of how I'd see the fight going if you were talking to peak Liam Smith. I don't think we have that anymore. It would make me favor Josh Kelly. Although I still think Josh Kelly's ceiling is not exceptionally high, I think at this point in Liam Smith's career is probably enough for Josh Kelly to get over that. Tyler Denny against Hamza Shiras, you know, two things about two things Tyler Denny is a fighter who 
has come up the hard way. I've said it about him before. He is a product of the gym, which is one of those fighters who he's not blessed with natural ability. You know, he's a pressure fighter with, with not much punching power, which can normally spell disaster for pressure fighters, to be honest. But he's able to get around that. He has enough power to hurt guys. He hurt Felix Cash. And he's come up the hard way, and he's beaten guys who had much, much more of a proven background. Certainly Felix Cash in the amateurs was a good amateur. And he's stuck at it. He's not let the losses deter him. He stayed in the gym. He's got a sponsor. And you see how talented he is. Like, he is talented. There's talent there. And he's been able to hold that in the gym. He's going in there with Hamza Shearis. And yikes. That is... Listen, I watched a Felix Cash fight. And Felix Cash looked bigger. He looked about a weight division bigger. That's nothing compared to what Hamza Shearis is going to look on fight night. Hamza Shearis is a tremendous puncher. He's massive for middleweight. He has a tremendous jab and right hand. And he is just going from strength to strength to strength. I love the way he handled himself. I don't know when the Amo Williams fight, he was stunned early on. But he really took a foothold in that fight after that. And ultimately, you know, he really gave Amo Williams a tremendous beating in that fight. And he really handled himself like a leader. He was the captain of Queensbury. And he really took that role and went with it he really, he really had the kind of leader vibes off Hamza Shearer's so I'm glad Tyler Denny is getting exposure on a big pay-per-view card at Wembley Stadium of all places I'm glad that he's going to make a life-changing amount of money because he probably will for this fight but I don't give him a sniff of a prayer against Hamza Shearer's I really don't I, I think he's gonna I, I think that that is a Hamza Shearer's win definitely and if the titles are on the line the EBU title then Hamza Shearer's will become EBU champion I want to get him a world ranking. I'm pretty sure he already... I'm pretty sure he's already got very high rankings anyway. But an EBU title doesn't hurt. Joshua Boazzi, Willie Hutchinson. We already kind of knew this fight was going to be on the undercard. We already kind of knew it. This is, this is one of the fights that we were already kind of like, okay, well, we, we kind of know. So, yeah, Joshua Boazzi, Willie Hutchinson. I like the fight. I really do. It's nice that we're seeing boxer fighters be part of this card now. It's not just the traditional Queensbury match room. You've got boxer. You've got Wasimut in there. So you've got the four main guys. And they would be the four main guys. You could say GBM are there as well. But they're still building. They're on the zone now. But they're building. But the four main promoters in Britain, we have them, all their fighters. And, and some of them are in, you know, dust-ups. They have one fighter from one promotional company versus another so that's a good fight it does leave anthony yard out in the wilderness but he has only himself to blame for that and boazzi versus hutchinson you know boazzi over the last few years hasn't looked as impressive as he did having said that i still maybe i willie hutchinson proved me very badly wrong in that craig richards fight but i think joshua boazzi is better than craig richards and that doesn't necessarily mean just because one fighter beat the other doesn't necessarily mean he'll beat willie hutchinson but I do think he will have the beat in the Willie Hutchinson. I do. On points, most likely. But I think that's a great fight. I think it's a brilliant fight. And I can't wait to see it. And then another, another fight that just was kind of like... Okay? You know, just the real kind of okay type of fight. Which is... And not okay as in it's an okay fight. It's just kind of like... Alright, that come, came out a bit of left field. And then he could catch it. Who had a win and picked up the IBF... 130 pound title the IBF super, super featherweight title against Joe Cordina on the undercard of Fury versus Usyk he will now be making his first defense against Josh Wharton of uh, of all people match room versus Queensbury yet again and um Josh Warrington he hasn't fought as far again as far as I'm aware but Josh Warrington is a, is a big name so you know about his fights and he hasn't fought since the Lee Wood fight and I have to be honest now this is something that i'm not best pleased with it's not necessarily that i'm upset about the fight but i don't think josh warren should be going into a world title fight off the back of not just one loss but two back-to-back -back defeats i don't think he should be getting a world title shot as much as i like the fight i don't think he has i, I don't think he should be getting it and especially at 130 pounds where he's never fought before for me i don't like the the idea of him getting an instant crack at a world title when he's had back-to-back -back defeats fair enough they've both been in world title fights but again back-to-back -back defeats no i don't like that i don't approve i don't like that i don't like someone just going in and getting an instant world title shot again off the back of two defeats so that's what i will say about that in terms of looking at the fight objectively i like it 
Anthony Kakache really, really, really impressed me against Joe Cordina, saying that Joe Cordina looked extremely flat. I mean, that was, he looked horrendous in there. But Anthony Kakache, I had a lot of questions about him, I did, because I thought at, you know, 35 years old, 35 years old at 130 pounds is ancient. It really is. I didn't think he'd be able to rise to the occasion. I thought he might have had it in him a few years ago, but not now. But he rose to that occasion and then some. Josh Warrington, on the other hand, is actually the younger man. But again, he's had a hard, hard career. You know, he had that knockout defeat against Lee Wood. He had that really hard fight, which he lost to um, Lopez, Luis Alberto Lopez. He was badly knocked out by Mauricio Lara in a fight in which he took a tremendous amount of punishment a couple of years ago. So it's been a rough couple of years for Josh Warrington. If you were talking, again, peak Warrington versus Kakache, I'd probably favour Josh Warrington. I think he'd outwork him. But I, I don't see Josh Warrington winning this fight. And I think it'll be an entertaining fight. I think it's a very, very good little undercard. But I don't like the fact Warrington is getting this title shot off the back of not just one defeat. One defeat would be bad enough. I'd be saying, no, you shouldn't be getting the world title shot. But two? No, no, I don't like that. No, I don't like that at all. So that is the undercard. I like it. I know there was talk of Naomi Inoue being on the undercard, which, you know, Inoue in Wembley, in the UK. I mean, that's just incredible to think of. I know there was a lot of talk that we would actually get uh, Fabio Wadley, Fraser Clark too. Obviously isn't the case. I don't know what Ben Shalom is going to do with that. If you couldn't get it on this show, he'll probably do it on a standard boxer show, which is, look, that's that's fine in of itself. It's a very, very good fight. But there was talk that we would get that. We're not. But let, lads, look at this card. And people are going to say, oh, it's not that good a card. What? It's a great card. That is a very, in, ter in terms of fight cards we've had in the UK and Britain, this is right up there. This is a great little card. I like it and the main event need I say anymore so I think it's a brilliant card I really do and I look forward to watching it I look forward to watching it maybe even I'll be there for it who knows but if I'm not I'll definitely do a live watch along for it 100% let me know your thoughts in the comment section below what you think of the Joshua Dubois undercard are you feeling like mm, it's not that great or are you like me saying no it's a good undercard it's a good undercard we've had cars in Saudi which on paper, they have been better. But, lads, it's still a flipping good undercard. <laughs> Ain't no complaining about that undercard. No way. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Hope you enjoyed it, people. Smash the like button if you could. Hit subscribe, of course, if you haven't already. And for now, lads, I'll leave it there. Peace.